This is our second test with the PowerPack 8 amp hour battery while we're comparing it to all the other ones while you're using it on a high output tool. Our last tool was with an impact driver that had some weird nuances to it. We kind of wanted to just see what was happening more with the impact driver, but it gave us a real good look at what was happening with the batteries. Now on this test, I'm using the DCS 570 and that is a 20 volt, seven and a quarter inch circular saw. I put the Milwaukee thick kerf blade on this just to kind of compare a little bit what happens with the difference between the tests that we did with the Milwaukee new seven and a quarter inch circular saw. It's not apples to apples by any means. This is more watts, There's da, 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 da. but I just wanted to throw it over here because the test isn't about how fast this saw cuts through or if it can cut through, it will. The test is about how much drag we put on the battery and how much voltage they keep. The more voltage that's up, the more amps they're pushing. A lot of things are happening with this, but I think that the goal here was to really drag the saw down and not compare speed of cuts. Obviously, a consistent speed going through or a consistent pressure going through is what we want to see. Obviously, the lower the voltage, the slower the RPM, the slower the cut, the higher the voltage, the faster we're going to go through. I'm not trying to push this beyond its means and bog anything down, but obviously there's knots in this. You're going to see that. And when we hit a knot, sometimes we hit a little bit of a voltage drop, which can skew the results slightly if we hit the knot on a lowest point. It's not gonna really make that much difference, but that's the whole reason why this blade is on this saw. They would cut much faster if we had the standard blade on here. Wouldn't matter though, we're testing batteries, not the saw. Let's get after it. Here's the standard five amp hour battery. Here's the five amp hour power stack battery. Here's the XR6 amp hour battery. Here's the Power Pack 8 amp hour battery. Here's the Flexvolt 9 amp hour battery. Here's the Flexvolt 12 amp hour battery. All right, let's discuss how this all turned out and we'll start out with the standard five amp hour battery. This started out at 20.65 volts and its low was 13.86. We're seeing this with five amp hour batteries. They simply don't 
put out the power that you need anymore. Although they were in kits everywhere and people used to have two amp hour batteries in kits, then they went to the fives. They're just not the battery for a lot of tools anymore. And that's pretty much what we expected. Now the five amp hour power stack, on the other hand, started out at 20.73 and its low was 17.25 that I could see. It really held in much higher voltage. Obviously it's putting out more volts, more amps, and this thing rocked its way through this, although the cut looks a little bit slow because of the blade. Remember that, we discussed that earlier. Overall, pretty dang good in my opinion. The six amp hour, which is a standard XR battery, it's been one of those with DeWalt that's kind of been a good pack to have around. Started out at 20.66 and its low was 17.0. Three. Pretty dang good when compared to the power stack battery on this saw. Very, very close, negligible as far as the testing goes with everything that we have going. I would say that that's almost equal. The eight amp hour power pack, which is what everybody is looking at, the new uh, battery that's out, 20.70 for the start, 18.13 for the low, a full volt almost higher than the power stack in the 5 amp hour and the XR 6 amp hour. That thing rocked itself out on this and I think that is a very viable battery that's smaller, lightweight, and has a lot of punch to it. It proves that it's better than the 5 amp hour power stack by a long shot. The 9 amp hour flex bolt starts out at 20.71 and has a low of 18.11. It pretty much mimics the eight amp hour power pack. So I guess that's good to know for anyone who's out there who's like, well, I want the power, you know, but I, I don't want to spend the money. If you find the flex volts on sale, they're larger, they're heavier, but performance wise, stuck right there on this saw. And I think that's pretty big when you look at the picture of how much money do you want to put out on some of this stuff. Here's one where I think the knot got in the way, the 12 amp hour flex volt started out at 20.73 and had a low of 17.95 and that's when I hit one of those little knots. You can hear it, you can see it when it goes through, um, but otherwise held in the 18s very close to where the 9 amp hour was. Still, the 9 amp hour hit some knots as it went through, 12 amp hour, hard to say. We're not talking about, again, a lot of voltage drop in that situation and due to the testing and how we're pushing things through, I'd call that almost a tie. I mean, there's going to be a percentage of error in there and that definitely fits in there. So if you're looking at what battery to purchase, obviously any of the flex volts are going to be a deal. If you can find them, they're a little bit older. The power pack, if you're looking for something that's a hot rod that's smaller and sig significantly smaller when we put them up there and lighter by a long shot, the power pack is going to be where it's at. There's no doubt. In fact, it kind of makes the power stack look like old news in many ways. And I think that's great for us to see. We're seeing it across the board with tool companies coming out with these new batteries that are tabless. And I think it just rocks the market and it makes things go. Kicker, the new tools that come out are gonna be made for that battery, right? Just as what we said in the Milwaukee video, this Milwaukee saw here, oops, didn't run on a five amp hour battery in our test. It kept pausing itself through, freaking the saw out. Simple. So in this case, the saw would run better with a normal blade, but think about what you're buying for the future in the tools that you're gonna look at in the future because not all these saws are gonna work with a five amp hour battery and aren't really meant to anymore. And they're not gonna be meant to work with some of these sixes and they're gonna heat up. That's the difference. None of these things heated up at all. Of course, it's only one cut per battery. Saw didn't heat up, everything performed well. You know, there's some variables that we need to kind of work our way out to get some really scientific testing in this. And we're working on some of that, but I'll tell you the power pack in itself for a 20 volt battery is really a bargain when you look at the power if you need it. So something to look at there. 
Always interested in your comments, please leave them below. If you want any other testing done, we're gonna to continue to kind of work through this with not only the Milwaukee tools, the DeWalt, and probably pull in a couple of the others just to see what happens when we get some of these new tools that are really powerful, really fast. What do they need? What's going on? Lots of things happening in the tool world right now, and it's kind of exciting, so I like that. Leave me your comments below. Give us a like in this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.